Penny wise, pound foolish. I'm going to show you how I recreated this sign using nothing but true flat plywood. And if you've ordered the Nova Plus 60 watt RF laser from Thunder Laser, I'm going to take you through each of the steps in producing this job on the laser today. If you're brand new to lasers, I hope it'll help you out or help you to familiarize yourself when the unit comes. So I hope you'll stick around for a few minutes today on Laser Nug. So a quick backstory for context and we'll get going. If you follow the channel, you'll remember I made this sign about 14 months ago and I made it on my bolt. Hung it up at the cottage because it's kind of a cool sign for a cottage or a cabin or vacation home or any setting for that matter. Really nice, not a lot to it visually, but a few people have liked it and I've made a few of them. I was putting one together last week the way I had originally created it, which was with craft plywood and I painted all the pieces and I hand glued every piece. And during the construction of the assembly of it, I realized that with the experience I've gained and the addition now of this true flat plywood, virtually every color in the sign I can get in true flat, with one exception. If you recall in the initial design, this top layer was in green, but I painted them all virtually all these exact same colors. And during that build and assembly, I started to realize there has to be a better way. You might not realize it by looking at it, but there are 43 different pieces in this sign. 43 different pieces I had to sand, put several coats of paint on, wait for them to dry, and then hand glue each and every piece onto this backer. So it dawned on me that I needed to kind of rethink what I was doing and take a look at my costs. Those costs being the cost for true flat versus craft plywood, as well as hand gluing versus perhaps using some 3M 467MP adhesive. And at the end of the day, it's far more efficient, not only for me, but cost-wise, to change the way I'm making the sign. So we're going to run through it today, and I'll talk about how I'm creating the sign and why I'm using the true flat. I'm not going to have that green color in there, but it is a country-style sign, so wood grain finishes kind of hit the mark. So let's jump into Lightburn and get going. So here's my file in Lightburn. It's a pretty messy, but it'll make sense to you in just a second. Whenever I get a design or I start to make something, whether it's on a tumbler or drinkware, uh, plywood and engraving, any type of material or any type of product that I want to sell repeatedly in the future, I make what I call a production file. So if you look here to the left, that's the base design. And what I do for myself is I start pulling it apart. And you'll see here, I pull it apart and I separate the pieces by what material and whether it's a cut or an engraver or a score. You'll see here I'm going to make my template. I've separated out my backer. I always leave myself notes. So this is going to be your black true flat. I'm not putting a mask or 3M on it. And you'll see I've got small notes under every piece because in the future I don't want to forget what I was doing or what did make sense. And a couple of weeks ago I provided you the settings out of my material library for true flat, and I'm just going to make sure that they've maintained in this file. For the sign, I'm going to be using all six colors available from true flat plywood, as well as some 467 MP, and I'm going to mask every piece. You don't really have to mask true flat, but usually I do with the lighter colors like the white or the linen. But in this case here, the sign has a lot of tiny letters in it with small wispy pieces. And even though True Flat cleans up with water in a rag, it's kind of hard to get any of that scorching off in some of these corners. So I just thought for the sake of a little bit of mask, I should just mask everything, make it so much easier to clean up. Because we won't be engraving anything, we're just cutting today. I've taken my keys, opened up the big door, and I pulled out my honeycomb table. So we'll be cutting on the blade table. And I've swapped out the six millimeter engrave tip for the three millimeter cutting tip on the bottom of the laser head. The laser's all set up. We're about to fire it up, but before I put any material in it, I do a few things. Let me show you. This Nova Plus series has two power switches on it. One is marked main and the other one is marked laser switch. In your manual, you'll see that it always tells you that you're supposed to turn the main power to the unit on first and then turn on the laser. When you're finished at the end of the day, you do it in the reverse order. Shut off the laser first, then shut off power to the machine. So we're starting up, I'm gonna hit my main, you're going to hear a beeping. That beeping is telling you that the laser hasn't been turned on yet. Now that the machine's powered up, I can safely turn the laser on and you'll hear the beeping stops. 
when you hit that main power switch, it's going to light up. The machine is going to home the laser head back to the corner. It's going to complete its initialization and then it's going to return the laser head right back to wherever the last origin you set in the machine was. It has a memory. It remembers what you did yesterday. Turn on my laser. Now the beeping stops. Laser is engaged. Everything is ready to go. One important note, if you're doing any work on the laser head, you want to keep that laser switch off just for safety. That way you know that although it's virtually impossible to happen, there's not any laser or energy source that could possibly come through while your hands are in there. Before I lay my material in, I just want to do a visual check to make sure there's lots of room between the bottom of the laser head and the table to make sure I don't have any collisions. And if there isn't enough room, I'm just going to come to the panel and I'm going to drop the Z table until I'm comfortable before I put my material in. Now that I've got lots of room, I'm just going to move my laser head out of the way. Because it's the first job of the day, I just want to do a quick check or a test on my air pressure to make sure I'm getting enough. This is your low volume and your high volume. As you probably learned, your low volume will run when you have not checked air assist or high air in light burn. If you check off high air, as we are today cutting, it's going to use whatever your setting is for the high volume. So we're just going to test that low. And I'm getting about 0.4. That looks pretty good to me. And now we're going to check the high. We're only cutting today, so it's not going to use low volume. It'll always be using the high volume. And I have that turned up all the way. If you want to test to make sure that you're getting the air out of the laser head, shut off your laser switch only on the side of the machine. You'll hear the beeping. Push your test button again on your air assist, and you can just feel with your fingers underneath the laser head. Yeah, and I can feel lots of air coming out of there. So my laser's all good to go. I'm back in light burn. I've got different colors for different layers. All of my true flat pieces follow the same layer settings, and you'll see I've loaded them all in. I also like to make sure that if I'm engraving, I engrave first, score, and then I always cut last on my pieces. Very seldom do I want to cut first. Because I'm not engraving, there is no engrave layer. I've got my score layer, I have my cut layer for true flat, and I have a cut layer for my MDF. I'm gonna highlight my MDF because we're gonna cut the template first, and I'm gonna go to send it to the laser, but you'll notice my laser is disconnected. And this is very common. If you're working in light burn for a while, and then you turn on the laser, you'll notice it will not automatically connect. If you turn your laser on first and then open up your light burn program, light burn immediately goes to look for the laser it's already done that and the laser wasn't connected so in order to connect i'm just going to come down here to this devices and i'm going to right click it and you'll see light burn is now going to look for the laser it's going to see it and now my laser is ready it's now connected everything's good to go i'm going to use user origin i usually do um, 99 percent of the time that's my setting I like the top left corner because that's where I like to orient my, my framing. Everything's good. I'm highlighted. I always come up. I take a peek, make sure it looks the way it's supposed to, and I didn't miss anything when I grouped it. And I'm going to press OK, and I'm going to send it to my Nova Plus. For the sake of your sanity, I'm not going to take you through each layer. I do the exact same thing every time. Send the file. We're going to cut up our pieces and we'll talk a little bit while it's cutting. Let's head over to the laser. Laser's good to go. I'm going to drop my MDF in there, my 1 16th. I'm going to put it reasonably square. I'm just eyeballing it for now. I'm going to use these four arrows to move my laser head around. I want to bring it up towards the front on over top of my MDF. And I'm going to use my up arrow for my Z axis. And I'm going to bring the table up a lot closer. And if you're in a position where you have to square your piece perfectly, here's how I do it. In this case, I plan on cutting around the middle here. So I'm gonna take my piece of MDF and I wanna line up my red dot pointer right to the edge of the MDF. And I'm gonna use my left and right arrow on the controller. And I'm gonna make sure that my red dot follows the edge of that MDF in the same fashion. Okay, came off a little bit, so I'll just Move that a wee bit. Okay, 
Now I'm square. My piece is in it squared, and I do these steps in the exact same order every time. And if you're newer or beginner at lasers, it might be helpful to write these few steps down, put them on a sticky, and stick it up above the controller. Because after several attempts or after several jobs, you're gonna build muscle memory and it's just gonna come naturally every time. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press menu and your first option is autofocus and I'm gonna press enter. It's now autofocusing on that piece of MDF and now I'm ready to go. The Nova Plus series allows you to autofocus anywhere in the bed, not just in one specific spot. Now that I've autofocused, I'm gonna press file to pull up my file You'll see here I have a bunch of other files I've run recently because the Nova Plus has a one gigabyte memory. The top file is always the most recent file and you'll see a picture of it here. That's the one I want. If I wanted one of these other ones, I would just use my arrows and go down through the file list until I found the design I wanted. But we want the first one. We're good to go. I've got my settings. I'm gonna press enter. And now it's loaded this file as you can see, I only have one layer because all I'm doing is cutting a template. We're in good shape. Now that I have my file loaded, I'm just gonna drop my laser down a little bit because I wanna put it off the edge. I'm gonna press origin. That now tells the laser exactly where to start that file relative to where I set that little dot. And I always frame my piece before I run it. Perfect. I know now that it fits, my MDF is in the right spot and the laser is not gonna run off the edge. We're all good and we're ready to go. So now I can close my door down and I can press start and that'll begin the job. Let's run this job. In the event you need to run in for a coffee or maybe use the men's room, you can also press the start button again because it says start pause. And what it'll do is it will pause the job but it will stay exactly where it finished. When you finish getting your coffee and you come back, you can press the start button again and it will continue on without missing a single dot. It's important never to leave your laser unattended. It's possible that something could catch fire or maybe the material flips sideways and catches the laser head or something else happens. So you always gotta make sure you're with the laser when it's operating. So that's our first piece. I'm just gonna use my arrow keys to move my laser head out of the way. I'm now gonna be cutting 1 8 So before I put that 1 8 in, I'm gonna grab my Z axis down button and I'm gonna drop that table down a little bit because now I'm putting in thicker material. We've got our template now cut out. I'm gonna do the exact same process the same way for the rest of those pieces. So we'll get back together when it's done. All right, we're done with the laser. Let me show you how I shut it down. Because I wanna to try to avoid any accidental head collision tomorrow, I'm not sure what size pieces I might put in or later today. So I'm always gonna take my Z control, my up and down arrow, and I'm gonna drop my table down a couple inches. You don't need to drop it down far, but just enough that if I need the honeycomb, I'll have room to slide it in without turning the machine on. Or if I'm putting in large stock or large materials, I'll have lots of room under the laser head. Then I'm gonna take my directional areas, I'm gonna run my laser head to the back left of the machine, kind of close to where it homes, and I'm gonna press the origin button. What that does is it's the last origin that the machine will have in its memory. So later today or tomorrow, when I come to use the laser again and I flip the main and the laser switch on, it's not gonna run through into the middle of the, the bed in the event that I've got something put in there or I've kind of misstepped. So that's kind of my safety routine. Everything else looks good. I've let it run for a few minutes just to let the fan cool off the, the RF tube. And it's time to shut off. And remember, when you're shutting off, you're gonna shut that laser switch first. You're gonna hear the beeping and then the main power. Just the reverse of what you do when you turn it on.
We'll close her up. I always like to put a drop cloth over it when I'm done, just because I'm in my garage, it kind of keeps it clean. And now we've got our pieces. It's time to pick them and stick them. So we're all wrapped up and I think it turned out pretty nice. True flat went on well, quick assembly, quick build. When I did the painted models of this previously, I was about a three day delivery before I could ship it because you've got all those steps in the middle plus there's time periods in between. And you've got to wait for that paint to dry finally before you assemble. Using the true flat with the 467, I don't have all those hours of labor trying to glue 43 pieces together. I can laser it, assemble it, and ship it out the same morning. And that's worth a big consideration, I think. However, I wanted to share a few learnings with you because this is exactly why I create production files. Creating a production file makes a lot of sense for products that you plan on making over and over again. Production. You probably noticed this was my prototype or my first run off of that production file. And what I was able to glean this morning was I had three different mistakes in light burn, which didn't catch my eye until I ran them on the laser. So I've corrected those mistakes. Second thing, if you look really closely, you'll notice a few of the letters are damaged. And this has now happened, I think this is uh, the sixth, so this production run, or this prototype is the sixth sign I've made between the ones I made with the craft plywood and now with the true flat. And I have the exact same issue with this font. Whether it was the craft plywood or the true flat today, which I was hoping wouldn't happen, some of these letters are so wispy or have such tiny points and tiny thin cutouts that the material ends up snapping or breaking because they're so fragile and quite frankly, I'm not. <laughs> so I think what uh, we've learned from this production file is all fixed. I'm gonna go back in though and I'm gonna change this font to something that's a little bolder or a little thicker so that I remove myself or get away from these tiny points or these tiny little wispy lines, such as on the S's or the E's. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I'm gonna refinalize that production file with a new font. I'm gonna run another prototype, make sure it's bulletproof. Once it is, it's finalized. And I know now in the future, whenever anybody orders that sign, I pull up the file, I run the job, assemble it and ship it out, same day. That provides better service to the customer, good quality sign with good quality materials at a good price. And for me personally, I'm saving literally hours and hours of labor using the true flat instead of using a craft plywood or a plywood or an MDF. For you good folks with a Nova Plus on the way, I hope it was helpful that I took the time to step through how I run it or how I operate it. And for other folks, maybe it was helpful or good information to know. Thanks so much for sticking around today. Have a wonderful week. Have fun with your lasers and please be kind to each other. I'm Gord Potter and you've been watching Laser Nug. Cheers. Pennywise, take two, do it again. We're gonna walk through the recreate. I'm gonna show you today, not today. And for those that have ordered a take two. Okay, do it one more time just in case. And for you folks that have ordered a, and for you good folks that have, okay, don't do it. And for you folks that have ordered a Nova, <laughs> Okay, here we go. And for you folks that have ordered a pizza, pizza Nova. <laughs> okay, here we go. And for you folks that have ordered a Nova Plus. Oh, I was on a roll there. Do it again. As you get familiar with your unit. Ah, too long. Do it again.